Today we will discuss about the transformation involving the austenite for EP3C system. So here in this diagram, you can clearly see the transformation products of austenite. So depending on the cooling rate, the different products are formed. So if the cooling rate, uh, if cooling is fast, then austenite gets transformed into the martensite. If cooling is a moderate, then austenite gets transformed into the bainite. And if slow cooling is there, then austenite gets transformed into the perlite. So if cooling rate is fast, then uh, martensite product is formed. If moderate cooling is there, then bainite is formed. And if slow cooling is there, then perlite is formed. So again, heat treatment at low temperature, tempered martensite will produce. And at high temperature, spheroid martensite is formed. So CCT diagram for EP3C system. So time temperature transformation, that is a TTT diagram, gives us very useful information. They are of less practical importance since an alloy has to be cooled rapidly and then kept at that temperature to allow for respective transformation to take place. Usually materials are cooled continuously, thus continuous cooling transformation diagrams are appropriate. For continuous cooling, the time required for a reaction to being an end is delayed. Thus the isothermal curve are shifted to longer time and lower the temperatures. The main difference between TTT and CCT diagrams, no space for bainite in CCT diagram are as continuous cooling always results in the formation of the perlite. So this is the diagram which represents the CCT diagram for EP3C system. So on x-axis there will be the time logarithmic scale. Then on y-axis there will be the temperature in degree Celsius. Then uh, dotted uh, blue color uh, lines in the diagrams are shows for the TTT time temperature transformation curve. And uh, pink line shows the CCT that is the cooling curve diagram. So here A represent the austenite, P represent the perlite, B represent the bainite, and M represent the martensite. So this is the CCT diagram for iron carbide equilibrium system. Now the phase transformation in EP C3 binary system. So here EP ap 3 c phase diagram is characterized by five individual phases. That is alpha ferrite BCC, EP carbon solid solution. Then austenite, that is a FCC, EP carbon solid solution. Delta ferrite, which is a BCC, FC, EP C solid solution. And EP 3 c that is iron carbide or cementite. An intermetallic compound and liquid EP3C are a ferrous and carbon solution and four invariant reactions are there. So first is a peritectic reaction at 1495 degrees Celsius, which contains 0.16% carbon delta ferrite plus liquid gives austenite. Then monotectic reaction uh, again 1495 degrees Celsius temperature and 0.51% carbon liquid will get converted into the liquid and al austenite. Then you take the reaction at 1147 degrees Celsius and 4.3% carbon. So liquid will get transformed into the austenite iron and uh, cementite. So the that is called as the lady burite. Then you take the reaction where uh, it happens at 723 degrees Celsius, which is a 0.8% carbon and uh, gamma iron that is austenite gets converted into the alpha pyrite and cementite that is all called as a perlite. So the EPC alloy classification based on the percentage of carbon present in the alloy. So it will the commercial pure iron 0.008% carbon. 
then low carbon my steel so up to 0.3% carbon then medium carbon steel up to 0.32 0.8% carbon then high carbon steel 0.82 2.1% carbon and cast iron uh, 2.1 uh, greater than percentage of carbon then cast iron that were slowly cooled at to room temperature consist of cementite a look whitish white cast iron if uh, it is contains graphite look grayish so that is a gray cast iron it is a heat treated to have a graphite in the form of nodules so malleable cast iron if inculants are used in the liquid state to have a graphite nodules this spheroidal graphite cast iron is formed this is the ttt diagram for eutectoid transformation in ferrous carbon system so on x axis uh, there will be the time on y axis temperature from 0 to 800 degrees celsius then a is the austenitic phase p is the perlite phase b is the bainite phase and m is the martensite martensitic phase so whenever a cooling starts from the te temperature so there will be the conversion of uh, austenite into the perlite austenite into upper perlite that is a coarse perlite and fine perlite then austenite into the bainite that is a upper bainite and lower bainite and third one is a martensite that is a austenite into the martensite with the fast cooling so the martensitic start uh, temperature is there and martensitic finish temperature line is there which will shows the conversion of the austenite into the martensite with the increasing the percentage of martensite and reducing the other percentage of austenite so this is the ttt diagram for eutectoid transformation in fp3c system next is a nucleation and growth so the structural changes or phase transformation takes place by nucleation followed by growth temperature changes are important among variables like pressure composition causing the phase transformation as diffusion plays an important role two other factors that affects transformation rate along with the temperature that is the one is a diffusion controlled rearrangement of atoms because of com compositional and or crystal structure differences so difficulty encountered in nucleating the small particles via change in the surface energy associated with the interface just nucleated particle has to overcome the positive energy associated with the new interface form to survive and grow further it does by reaching a critical size so that is the nucleation and uh, growth next is a homogeneous nucleation that is a kinetics so homogeneous nucleation occurs within the presence space all sides are equal the probability of for nucleation so it requires considerable under cooling so the cooling of material below the equilibrium temperature for a given transformation without the transformation occurring free energy changes associated with the formation of new particles so that will be represented by delta f is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube delta g plus 4 r 4 pi r square gamma where r is the radius of the particle delta g is the gibbs free energy change per unit volume and gamma is the surface energy of interface in homogeneous nucleation critical value of particle size represented by r that will be minus 2 times gamma by delta g or r is equal to 2 gamma tm by delta hf delta t where tm is the freezing temperature in kinetics delta hf is the latent heat of fusion delta t is the amount of under cooling at which nucleus is formed then heterogeneous nucleation is the probability of nucleation occurs at certain preferred site is much greater than that of the other sites so during solidification inclusion of foreign particles that is inculant wall of container holding the liquid in solid solid transformation foreign inclusions gain boundaries interfaces stacking faults and dislocations considering force equilibrium during the second phase formation so austenite alpha delta phase is equal to the austenite alpha beta phase into called cos of theta plus austenite beta and delta phase then the reactions are there in the heterogeneous nucleation then growth kinetics after formation of the stable nuclei growth of it occurs until the equilibrium phase is being formed so the growth occurs in two methods thermal activated diffusion control individual atom movement or a thermal collective movement of atom first one is more common than the other 
so the temperature dependence of nucleation rate u growth rate i and overall transformation the temperature dependence of nucleation rate u growth rate i and overall transformation rate dx by dt thus is the function of both nucleation rate and growth rate that is the dx by dt is the function of u that is nucleation rate and i that is the growth rate so this is the graph showing the uh, growth of nuclei kinetics that is a i u dx by dt versus temperature that is a delta t thank you for watching the topic